Hello and welcome to another episode of the System Slayer. Today I'm going to show you how to go ahead and make your terminal window look really nice using something called Powerline. And what that's going to do is it's going to change our uh, command prompt right here and it's going to give it some color and it's going to give it some git functionality as well. It's important to note that in this video I'm going to be working with Bash. Uh, Powerline does work with other shells but for this tutorial I'm going to show you how to configure it for Bash. And uh, another thing is that I'm currently on Mac, but just because I'm on Mac doesn't mean that what I'm going to show you here won't work for you if you're on another uh, Unix-like operating system like Ubuntu. Um, I'm going to uh, make the steps uh, as agnostic as possible so that uh, whatever I do here will also work for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, obviously, you can tell that I'm working with Bash because iTerm shows that up here. But in case you are not sure, what you can do is you can actually type in echo dollar sign zero. And that's going to tell you which shell you're currently running. So I'm good. I am on bash. The next thing that we need to do is actually verify that we have Python installed. So, you know, let's go ahead and type in Python 3 dash dash version. And I currently have Python 3.7.1 as my default Python installation. Now, having Python is, is important because Powerline runs off Python. So, you know, without Python, you're not going to be able to do anything. So go ahead and get yourself a Python 3 installation if you don't have it already. Once you already have that, you should also have pip3, which is the package manager. We're going to go ahead and use this to install Powerline and uh, Powerline git status. So let's go ahead and type in pip3 install dash dash user. And now we're going to type in Powerline status. Now this is the base Powerline package. So let's go ahead and install that. I already have it installed, so you know I don't have to do anything, but you guys will probably see some things downloading and setting up right here. Next up, we need to go ahead and type in pip3 install powerline git status. So this is going to be the git portion that's going to make our command prompt really useful later. So once you already have all this set up, the next thing we need to do is we need to find a couple of files that come with the packages that we just installed. One of them is powerline daemon and another one is powerline sh. I already know where these files are located in my system, but again, you know, that's a very Mac specific thing. I want to make this as agnostic as possible. So what I'm going to do is just use the find command to go ahead and find these files. So I'm going to go ahead and type in find and now I'm going to type in slash just so that we can start looking for things in the root directory. Now, I don't care about any error output, so I'm gonna go ahead and redirect that to dev null, and then I'm gonna pipe that into grep and type in powerline daemon. Now, this is gonna go ahead and look for the powerline daemon file. So let's go ahead and give it a second for that to come up. Okay, so we have something here. Again, I didn't really need to do this. I know where these are at, and, and if you're an experienced user, you might know where these things are at as well, but I'm trying to make things as accessible and as agnostic as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the powerline daemon path, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it over here in my notepad for now. So that's one file. The next one that we need to look for is, uh, we're gonna actually uh, execute the same command, but now we're gonna look for powerline sh. Okay, so we found some stuff here. We're doing a bash installation. So what we care about is this one right here. As you can see, we have powerline bindings, bash, powerline sh. That's the one we care about. Let's go ahead and copy that. And let's go ahead and paste it in our notepad. Okay, so with that, we have found the two files that we care about. The next thing we have to do is we need to go ahead and write some code that is going to execute basically every time that you open up a new terminal or a new shell. And of course, if, you, if you're aware of how to do that, then you know that we are going to be editing either the bash RC or the bash profile files. I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, bash profile. And this is, of course, in the home directory. So it'd be home bash profile like that. Uh, if you're on another um, system like Ubuntu or something, you might just be editing bash RC or something like that. Uh, just keep that in mind. But for now, I'm going to be using bash profile. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. I already have some stuff in here. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. If you already have some stuff in your bash RC or bash profile, you don't need to delete it. I just want to go ahead and have a clean slate right now. If you do have some stuff here, you can just go to the very bottom of, of your file and start typing the stuff that I'm going to show you here. So let's go ahead and start typing here. I'm going to put a comment saying power line. Uh, so that we can denote that uh, everything below this line uh, belongs to basically powerline configuration. The first thing that we need to do is we need to change our path variable. And that's because powerline needs to look for a couple of things that we installed. And we need to make sure that those things are in our path so that powerline can find uh, those specific scripts. So let's go ahead and type in export path equals we're going to put our original path at the beginning. So you know, basically what the path already was and then 
At the end of that path, we're going to add something new. And what we add here is actually dependent on your operating system. That's why I went ahead and copied these files over here. What we need right here is if we look at the powerline daemon path that we have over here in our notepad, we need everything before powerline daemon. We go ahead and copy that and we're gonna go ahead and paste it here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the extra P. And now we're basically saying, hey, the place that has Powerline Daemon, let's go ahead and add that to our path. The next thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to export another variable, which is the LC all, and we're gonna type in nus.utf-8. If you're in the United States and you're speaking English or you have your, your computer in English and all that stuff, this setting right here is gonna work for you. If not, you can always look up the correct value for LC all if you're speaking French or something like that and you want your computer to be uh, in that locale. The next thing to do is type in actually powerline daemon-q, which is gonna start up the powerline daemon. Below that, we're gonna need to configure two environment variables, powerline bash continuation, set that equal to one, and also we're gonna configure powerline, powerline bash select, and set that equal to one. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna make sure that your powerline command prompt is refreshing correctly. So if you're navigating around in your shell and stuff like that, it's always gonna look right. Let's go ahead and move on to the last line that we need to add here. Uh, we're gonna type in, we're gonna type in source. And then finally, we're just gonna take what we copied over here and paste. With that being done, we can write and we can quit. And at this point, we could actually start up a power line, but it wouldn't look the way we want it to, and it probably wouldn't uh, work the way we want it to as far as Git goes. So we need to go ahead and make a few configuration changes before we start it up. In order to make those configuration changes, we need to go ahead and make some local directories so that we can basically have a local copy of, of these configuration files um, within our home folder. So we're gonna type in the following command, config, power line, color schemes just like that so we've made that directory and uh, we need another one which is going to be themes shell so now we have these two directories obviously they're empty we just made them we need to go ahead and put some configuration files in there we're not gonna make them from scratch what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy them from the installation location that these pip commands went ahead and put them in if you go ahead and take a look at this that we pasted over here. We can go ahead and copy just about almost everything here. Now, again, this is specific to my machine, but since we did the find command, this beginning part here should be different for you and should be correct for you. So just go ahead and copy that beginning part. And we're gonna use the CP command to go ahead and copy. So let's go ahead and paste. Now we have the beginning of the, the path that we need. So now we're gonna type in config files, color schemes, take the default, and then we're gonna put it in the directory that we just created, which is config powerline color schemes. Boom. So now we have the default file over in our local config directory in our home folder. We're gonna do the same thing for the other directory for the other file. So we'll go ahead and go and erase that part. And now we're gonna type in themes and then shell. And then there's gonna be a default.json file in there. And we're gonna go ahead and move that over to our themes shell folder that we made. So now we should have a default.json file within each of the two directories that we made earlier. Okay, we're almost there. We're gonna make some changes to the color schemes file first, and these changes are gonna be related to Git. So let's go ahead and vim into that file, config, power line, color schemes, and then default. You're gonna see a JSON file here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go basically to the bottom of it, add a comma here, a new line, and we're gonna paste some code in there. Uh, don't worry about copying this code. I'm gonna link you to a place where we can, you can just get this code and paste it in yourself. Uh, again, don't worry about you know typing all this stuff in by hand. Okay, so we got those tabs in there. It's looking nice, looking good. That should be well formatted. Let's go ahead and write and quit. So that went ahead and added some Git stuff uh, to our color schemes. Next thing, we need to go ahead and edit our shell theme here so that our Git stuff starts appearing. So let's go ahead and vim into that file. Instead of color schemes, we're gonna go into themes, shell, default. So we're gonna stay within the, so if you see some JSON here and you see some uh, segments and then the left section, we're gonna stay within the left section 
and we're gonna go ahead and take this actually and we are going to paste it we're gonna basically make another one and we're gonna edit this part here and we're going to type in powerline underscore get status dot get status and we're gonna give it a priority of 40. Uh, let's make sure we don't forget the comma here otherwise we're gonna get some errors so because this is json so now this should be well formatted and this value should be correct so let's go ahead and save that and get out of there at this point we can actually go ahead and start up our power line and let's see what it looks like uh, in order to do that we're going to go ahead and source into our bash profile so that uh, the changes take place so let's go ahead and do that and just like that we got the start of our power line stuff here now you might notice that it looks a little bit funky we have some symbols here. Uh, it looks like some question marks and stuff, and it, it looks kind of odd right here. There's like a little box or something. We are going to actually download some fonts that can go ahead and you know make this stuff look better. In order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and clone a repository. Oops. Okay, so we went ahead and cloned this repository. I cloned the repository here into a directory called Powerline Fonts. So the next thing to do is actually install the fonts. And luckily, these fonts that we downloaded come with an install shell uh, script so that we can go ahead and run it. And it, even if you are in Ubuntu or something like that, this shell script is going to work. So at this point, you should have these fonts already installed. If you're on iTerm or basically any terminal that you're using, uh, in order to go ahead and take advantage of these fonts so that you can fix this stuff, you're gonna need to change the font, obviously. So let's go ahead and open up our preferences, go to profiles, text, and one that you can use is source code, source code pro. Um, there's a couple of them that obviously you got that you got from that uh, repository. As long as you see, you know, the name of the font and then it says something like for power line, like you see here, it should work. So let's go ahead and change that. Uh, that went ahead and took care of things. As you can tell, um, these actually look very nice. Now you get some, some nice arrow tips right here and the question marks are gone. So before I show you the Git stuff and basically how this is going to look when you're working within a repository, I want to go ahead and show you how to customize these colors and stuff like that so that you can make it look however you want to. So what we can do now is since we made those files, those local files, we can type in config, we can go to power line, we can go to color schemes and default. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that you can play with. I'm going to show you the quickest thing, which is user. These values are predetermined values. You can always look them up or look around in here to see what you can use. But I'm going to use bright yellow. And for the background, I'm going to use gray zero. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and write and quit. This command prompt might update uh, as soon as you save that file. You know, sometimes, um, however, I just saved that file and, you know, the changes didn't take place. So in order to remedy that, what you can do is restart the power line daemon. And to do that, you can type in ps ef pipe grep and then power line daemon. Now you can see this is the process that's, uh, you know, power line daemon. So go ahead and copy the PID and then we can just type in kill dash nine and then paste that PID. And uh, at that point, the changes went ahead and took place. Now you do want to go ahead and, and restart Powerline Daemon. So you can just type in source and uh, obviously your bash profile. And at this point, you know, Powerline Daemon is back online and all that stuff. If you don't want to be basically restarting Powerline Daemon manually in this way, you can actually do something in your bash profile that uh, will kind of help you out. Uh, or make this process a little bit simpler. And that is the following. And let me actually show you one more time. Let's go ahead and go into the config. And I'm gonna go ahead and set it back to what it was. Change it back to white here. And I'm gonna set it back to dark blue here. Now, obviously the changes didn't take place, but what I can do is go into bash profile and within this power line daemon line, I'm going to go ahead and type in dash R. So that's going to go ahead and basically replace the power line daemon every time we source into our bash profile.
And as you can see, when it comes back, it comes back with uh, the colors that we wanted it to, to be basically. Now, obviously I typed in source bash profile here, but if I had just closed my terminal and opened up a new one, you know, it, it would have uh, opened up with the correct color again, you know, blue and, and white. So uh, the only downside to that is that, as you can tell, every time you open up a new uh, terminal, you're going to have to wait a little bit. As you can see, it takes a little while for the old daemon to, to basically go away and be replaced by the new one. And that affects things like your, um, your shells over here in PyCharm and things like that. Um, so you see, I, I just opened up a new shell and it's taken a little while and it finally came in. Let's do another one. You see, it takes a while. So most of the time you don't want to be putting the dash R file or the dash R flag into this command here. You want to go ahead and take that out so that this kind of stuff, you know, gets, a, it's a little bit more speedy. You don't want to be waiting uh, too long. So. Uh, and honestly, you're not going to be editing these files or these config files that often. So, you know, anytime you go ahead and, and make a change, if it doesn't uh, happen automatically for you, just go ahead and kill the demon and then bring it back up and you should be good at that point. Close up these terminals. Okay. So now I have it up. As you can tell, I'm within a PyCharm project and now we see not only the path where we currently are, but we are seeing uh, also the current branch that we're on. and it's green right now, meaning that there are no changes. The current workspace is clean. Uh, let me go ahead and show you that real quick. So if I do a git status, nothing to commit, working tree is clean. That's why you see this green. If I go ahead and actually come into this file and I just, you know, make a quick comment or something, and uh, then I come back and get status. Now you can see that this changed. The master is no longer green. And we see that we have basically one change. It's telling us right here that we have a change. So that's really cool. Um, it, it does things like that for you. Uh, if you go ahead and uh, let's say we made a new file. I'm not going to add it. And now you see that I have one file that is not tracked. Uh, basically something something else is there um, so this is actually really helpful uh, now I can actually check out my branches you know I can go ahead and uh, copy that and then check out into that branch and as you can tell I am now showing that I'm on that branch over here in my power line so this kind of stuff is really cool you know I can go ahead and clean it up again And it went ahead and removed the change. Obviously the untracked file is not affected by that, but if I went ahead and uh, you know did an RM of file TXT, uh, it now shows that I'm on this branch and that the work tree is clean uh, because it's green. So that kind of stuff is really cool. It ends up being really helpful sometimes. So, um, and it's always good to know which branch you're on so that you're not committing things into the incorrect space. So yeah, that's basically Powerline. You should now have um, a configurable Powerline that looks really nice and shows you some Git stuff um, also on the side. Now, uh, if you guys manage to find some cool color schemes or some cool settings that, that look really cool and you really like, uh, you know, I'd love to hear about that in, in the comments below. Go ahead and paste that and let me know what's going on there. Uh, I would love to check it out and try out your settings. And also, if you enjoyed this video, you found it useful, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other content. Uh, share it with your friends. All that stuff really helps out the channel. Uh, and it helps me, you know, basically in, in the algorithm and all that stuff. So I'd really appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys staying until the end here. I hope you found this useful. And uh, until next time, I'll go ahead and talk to you later.